me, girly. This video is all about you. Did you see the treats I brought over here? No, you weren't supposed to see them. It was to surprise you if you're awesome. Jamie Lee here from Bird Tricks, and I wanted to do a Q&A with my Congo African Grey, Cressy. You guys had a ton of questions about her, and I know African Greys in general are pretty popular among pet owners. Um, it's actually why I wanted to get an African Grey, is I wanted to see what the fuss was about. Everybody wanted an African Grey, and I just thought, they're the one type of parrot that really isn't that colorful, that people just go crazy over, and I just thought, why? I wanna find out. The year we got Cressy, Dave was on a business trip in Las Vegas and he came across a pet store slash used battery shop and saw Cressy there in a really small cage. It was very unclean and he asked if her wings were clipped because she was at that fledging age, which is the natural age where they would normally be learning to fly in the wild. And the store owner said, oh, I meant to do it yesterday, but I haven't gotten around to it. So she's still fully flighted and Dave was like, I will take her. Uh, we brought her home, we got her initial medical check and she had a couple really funky diseases from just being in that gross place. Um, so we got her all cleaned up and she was our first free flight trained bird, which is so, so special. Another reason that we chose the African Grey to do free flight with was because it's what everybody at the time was saying is the hardest species to free flight train. So we thought, if we can do it with an African Grey, we could probably do it successfully with the rest of our flock. So this was kind of our, our test and it's been an amazing, amazing journey. So this is Cressy's first official day to outdoor free flight. We're here in the beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, where we found a pretty big empty lot. We're gonna take her and work her free flight. All right, Cressy, go in. Give me another foot. Hey, Cressy. Two first one close. Come here, Cress. Hey. Cress, come here. All right. Wow. Girl. First outdoor flight. Good girl. Whoa. Wasn't the most graceful landing, but we'll take it. That was her second flight.
first questions I got about Cressy is how old is she? And I do keep all of my birds hatch dates in the video description. She is actually hatched on Halloween. So her birthday or her hatch day is really easy for us to remember. And she was hatched in 2007. So she's gonna be 13 this year. Where did her name come from? So Cressy is actually the brand name of the scuba gear and dive gear that Dave and I used at the time. We lived on an island in the South Pacific called Saipan where we were avid scuba divers and Dave is an avid free diver and all of our gear was Cressy gear and we just thought that would be a great name for a female bird. So we named her Cressy and then shortly after we named Tusa Tusa because of the same reason. What can she say? Uh, Cressy is a lot more of a closet talker than the rest of our birds. So she can say quite a bit of things, but it's mostly from learning from Bandit on how to speak. She doesn't pick up stuff from, <laughs> was that nerve wracking? The blanket fell. Uh, she doesn't pick up words as easily from human tones and language as she does from birds language and tones. So she copies what Bandit used to say, which is night night, um, Bandit boy, Wandy, she tries to say Cresserton Messerton, but it sounds more like Cresserton Messerton. So she's working on it. The only thing that she really says clearly is Cressy, which is her name. Do you feel like talking right now? You don't seem like you feel like doing anything. What's your name? Cressy. Good, good girl. So I don't know if you guys can understand it that well. That is one thing that she's very not African gray on is her voice. Hey guys, so I'm backstage, but I'm going to show you that Cressy knows how to give a kiss now, which she learned from uh, listening to Bandit. Can I have a kiss? Cressy, can I have a kiss? Good girl. <laughs> At what age did Cressy hit puberty and how did it affect her personality? So we were floored by this, but at one year of age, mm, Cressy started showing hormonal signs and we thought this is way too early, what's going on? And it all happened because we thought it would be really funny to train one of our birds to lift its leg up on a fire hydrant. Do you need to do something? Do you wanna go on a stand? There you go. I wasn't sure if she was going to poop on me, but it kind of felt like it was going that way. Um, so anyways, we thought it'd be really funny to train a bird to lift its leg up on one of those little fire hydrants that they have the dog poop bags come out of. And when we went to train Cressy to do it, she simply went to town on that fire hydrant. So we were a little surprised and decided to teach Bond. Oh, you did have to go. Good call, good call. If you want to come back over here, you can. Do you want to come back since you already pooped? There's a treat in it for you. There's your turn, your turn. Good girl. Okay, she's back. How is Cressy's hormonal behavior different than other species? Um, I find a lot less of her trying to push her butt up against us. I see that a lot more in the macaws than I do with Cressy in particular. So that's nice. However, she is our most easily hormonally triggered bird. So just being on a perch or training or 
anything, it's really hard to snap her out of it and she'll just immediately do the heavy breathing droopy wings and, uh, and shortly after go to town. I don't know how many of you guys saw me do a video on our scale just how many edits I had to make on that because she kept getting horny on the, the scale itself was so agitating that day. It was impossible to get a 30 second take of you not loving that scale way too much. Why doesn't she free fly as much as the other birds? So Cressy, because of her coloration, she's really hard to spot in the sky because of her size and coloration, I should say. The sun conures, even though you lose sight of them, they're really noisy and they're really bright. So when they do come into focus, you can see them a lot more easily. Cressy flies kind of like a bullet. She flies really fast and um, she's just kind of harder to keep track of. So when we tend to fly her, we tend to tell our entire group, hey, we're gonna fly Cressy so that we can have more eyes on her and just have a better idea of where she's at. There's been times where I've been walking in the direction that I think she is and she's come and like hit me from behind and, and landed on my back and I've just been shocked. So she's a lot harder to just see out there and therefore a little bit more high risk because we always want to have eyes on our birds when we're free flying them. We don't want to lose sight of them for very long and we want to know where we lost sight of them if that ever happens. So we're just a lot more picky about where we fly her. Also, she's just not as agile as a fly of a flyer as some of our other birds. And because of her size, we just <clears throat> take more care and are more particular about where and when we fly her but she does love flying with the macaws. That's how she was actually raised to free fly was among macaws. So she has a great time and she's a great little flyer. We're just, we're really picky. Also, the other side of that is that a lot of the times when we're traveling, we're usually taking whichever birds are in that tour at the time. And if birds aren't in the tour exclusively, I don't always bring them on those trips. So sometimes we might be on tour for a couple months and that includes a free flight trip in there. And it's just the birds that are in the show that are also going on the flight trip. So it really depends on what our schedule looks like. What tricks does she know? She knows how to wave, spin, um, hang upside down like a bat, say her name, fly through a hula hoop. Um, Trying to think of what else. She does like a whole series of routines in our magic show. There's one called Cressy Card Trick, where she does a card trick with a kid. She does what's called a, um, a ringer. She, yeah, she does quite a few things. She knows quite a few things. You're a skilled little bug. You are. Crazy. What's her favorite treat? You guys, if you don't know by now, just based on her merch tagline, <laughs> good food, good mood, Cressy is a total foodie. She's not particular about anything. She will take the treat. Have treat, she will take it. Doesn't matter what it is, she will eat it. Um, she's our least picky. Treat eater, food eater, anything food, edible, yes, for Cressy. Why is she so messy? Um, I would have to say, I have no freaking clue why you're so messy, but one of the things that she does, and when we were performing on cruise ships, I had to line the walls with butcher paper and just tape it up because she takes our pellets and since they crumble so easily, she literally mixes half of her water with half of her pellets and then the other half of her pellets with half of her water and she makes this glop and she eats it, but she flings it and she wipes her face around and it's everywhere. It's all over the aviaries. I mean, it looks like I've left the aviaries unclean for days after a single day of her having pellets. It's just a total catastrophe. Why are you so messy? Probably just because she really loves food. What is her secret to always be so calm? I don't know, why are you so calm? 
Um, she is ridiculously calm. There's very little that gets her in a ruckus. I mean, this is Cressy. This is Cressy in the morning. This is Cressy in the afternoon. This is Cressy in the evening. This is what she is when she's not eating. You're psycho. You're nuts. You're super high energy. Just kidding. take it personally when she chose Dave as her person. Um...